Welcome to the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage, where rude mechanicals do magic. Hello, I'm Bronze Age, Director of the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage. And today we're going to be doing some faith healing on uh, this poor saint who has uh, lost his footing. Now, there's nothing remarkable about the lamp. It's called a figurine lamp, which means that it, uh, it's got this pipe up the back with a crook in it and a platform on the bottom so that you can put anything you want on it and have the light, light uh, illuminate it. In this case, somebody has taken this uh, apparently quite old wood carving and has mounted it onto the uh, lamp base. Now, I think this guy is a saint. I'm not sure. Uh, the only reason I think that is because down here there's some little guy obviously praying. We have what might be a helmet on him. Uh, that's about it. I don't know how many saints wore helmets. And then we have this peculiar thing of where he's reaching down and he's pulling up the hem of his tunic. That uh, I don't know if that identifies him as some particular saint or not. I'm not really that much up on my saints uh, be honest with you. Now what we need to do is figure out a way to mount him back on the block without causing more damage because this leg has already broken off one time, this foot is broken in half, and he's peeling just about all the way over. This is a common type of wood sculpture where they carve the figure out of wood and they cover it in plaster or gesso as it's sometimes called because that makes a good surface for painting. And that's how they put all this detailed paint in on the wood surface. Now, it's fairly obvious why this broke in the first place. Is we've got this very little small area for uh, glue to grab hold of. And you got this tall figure, so that's a lot of leverage. Somebody just reaches over to pick it up and grabs the saint by mistake. There's just no way it's going to hold. And you can see that this shoe is already broken one time. This one's broken right now. Now, the solution in these kinds of cases is we've got to figure out some way to transfer all that stress that's right there at the foot further up the leg. And the way we do that is by putting a steel pin in the base and drilling a hole in the leg, which that presents problems all its own. Because a bigger pin would be stronger, but that cuts away more of the wood, which makes the leg weaker. So we have to strike a balance between the two. And on top of that, I've got to drill a hole, and I want to get it up here past the knee, up into some of the original wood that's not been broken off before. We'll have to see how well that works out. Now we're going to start off by trying to make our saint as comfortable as possible. This is a jig that I've made out of scrap pieces I pulled out of the bin. Got this hole down here which I'm going to uh, line with this carpet underlayment. Very useful stuff to keep around the shop. A couple pieces up here. And his head will go right in there. And his legs right here. And I've got another piece of more padding, which is gonna hold the leg in place. should do it. Now we've moved our sink over to the uh, Packer Precision 12-speed drill press. I've um, got a 3 16th bit here running at 790 RPM. That's a little slower than I would usually use this size bit in wood, but I intend to go very slow on this one and try to create as little stress in the statue as possible.
Okay, there is to drill a hole that deep, slightly past the knee, without breaking out through the side. I'm going to call that a success. Now our drill jig can also serve as a work stand while we finish the rest of this. Now this is the pin I'm going to use. I would like a larger one for this kind of a job, but there's really not enough material in the leg to drill out any more wood to let a bigger pin fit in there. The adhesive I'm going to be using is 30 minute slow cure epoxy. And I'm going to fill the hole up and let it sit overnight. And then the rest of this, I'll attach it to the base. Now the rule with epoxy is that you really can't mix it too much. The old shipwright says that you mix it until you think you've mixed it enough, and then you mix it some more. And because this is a chemical process, and it's not like putting sugar in your tea, where you pour the sugar on top and it'll eventually get all the tea sweet. This has to be where every molecule of the hardener finds a molecule of the resin, and they make friends, and then they start to set up. But if you don't get them all shook up really, really good, a lot of them are going to go single that night. Okay, I think that's enough, plus a little extra. Now to apply it, I'm going to use this insulin syringe. What I've done is I've pulled out the needle and I've opened up the hole a little bit. And I'm going to suck up some epoxy in here. Now I have a lifetime supply of these things, which is to say I'm going to be using them for the rest of my life. But for trying to get epoxy and other glues down into little spaces like this, this is probably the best way possible. And we go slow because you don't want to flood it. There we go. Now I will let this sit overnight so that my 30-minute uh, epoxy can get good and hard and work on getting it fit to the base with them standing up nice and straight. Now this hole is going to be a little larger than the one in the leg, mainly because I've got a lot more wood to work with, and plus I need wiggle room to get this guy back in the proper position. Now that is what we call close enough for government work. All right, we're back with our extremely well-mixed epoxy, which I'm applying to these surfaces with this acid brush. Put that on here and then on the bottom of his shoe. I'm gonna pull out another syringe and suck up as much epoxy as I can through it. And we'll fill up this hole. It would be tempting to let him stand here like this in this position and let the epoxy cure, but I know better than that. I've got another fixture here for his head, 
go on top like that. And I pre-fitted it so that I know that that's going to actually hold it in place. And just run this clamp down. And I can push down on that and that'll give me a little downward pressure. And epoxy needs to be snug, but not too tight. And of course, with this kind of a figurine made of wood like this and very delicate it's just so tight you can get now i've had a chance to examine this wooden figurine very thoroughly and there's no clue to who he is or what he is the only reason i'm calling him a saint is because he's got this little guy down here with his hands clasped in prayer the only clue that we've got it's this one hand lifting up the hem of his uh, tunic or his skirt, or whatever you want to call it. If there's anybody else who is more informed on these kinds of things, I'd certainly welcome any comments about it. But until then, this is Bronze Age with Secret Underground Laboratory. Thank you for sticking through this video with me of putting Saint Somebody back on his feet. And uh, I do appreciate it. Hope you'll check in on the next video next week. Again, thank you.